The 14 British Overseas Territories are territories under the jurisdiction and sovereignty of the United Kingdom, but not part of it. They are those parts of the former British Empire that have not chosen independence or have voted to remain British territories. While each has its own internal leadership, most being self-governing, they share the British monarch as head of state. The name British Overseas Territory was introduced by the British Overseas Territories Act 2002, replacing the name British Dependent Territory introduced by the British Nationality Act 1981. Prior to 1 January 1983, the territories were officially referred to as British Crown Colonies, with the exceptions of the British Antarctic Territory in South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands and the British Indian Ocean Territory. The territories retain permanent civilian populations. Permanent residency for the 7,000 or so civilians living in the sovereign base areas of Akrotiri and Decalia is limited to citizens of the Republic of Cyprus. Collectively, the territories encompass a population of about 350,000 people, and a land area of about 667,018 square miles. The vast majority of this 660,000 square miles constitutes the British Antarctic Territory. The United Kingdom participates in the Antarctic Treaty System in, as part of a mutual agreement. The British Antarctic Territory is recognized by four of the other sovereign nations making claims to Antarctic Territory. Although the Crown Dependencies of Jersey, Guernsey and the Isle of Man are also under the sovereignty of the British Crown, they are in a different constitutional relationship with the United Kingdom. The British Overseas Territories and Crown Dependencies are themselves distinct from the Commonwealth realms. A group of 15 independent countries each having Queen Elizabeth II as its reigning monarch, and from the Commonwealth of Nations, a voluntary association of 53 countries mostly with historic links to the British Empire. The current minister responsible for the territories is James Dudridge MP of the Foreign Office. Gibraltar and the sovereign base areas, however, are the responsibility of the Minister for Europe David Lidington MP, while the Falkland Islands are the responsibility of Hugo Swire MP, also of the Foreign Office. Current Overseas Territories The 14 British Overseas Territories are History Early colonies, in the sense of English subjects, residing in lands hitherto outside the control of the English government were generally known as plantations. The first, unofficial, colony was Newfoundland, where English fishermen routinely set up seasonal camps in the 16th century. It is now a province of Canada known as Newfoundland and Labrador. It retains strong cultural ties with Britain. English colonization of North America began officially in 1607 with the settlement of Jamestown, the first successful permanent colony in Virginia. Its offshoot, Bermuda, was settled inadvertently after the wrecking of the Virginia Company's flagship there in 1609. With the Virginia Company's charter extended to officially include the archipelago in 1612, St. George's Town, founded in Bermuda in that year, remains the oldest continuously inhabited British settlement in the New World. Bermuda and Bermudians have played important, sometimes pivotal, but generally underestimated or unacknowledged roles in the shaping of the English and British transatlantic empires. These include maritime commerce, settlement of the continent and of the West Indies, and the projection of naval power via the colony's privateers, among other areas. The growth of the British Empire in the 19th century, to its territorial peak in the 1920s, saw Britain acquire nearly one quarter of the world's land mass, including territories with large indigenous populations in Asia and Africa. From the mid-19th century to the early 20th century, the larger settler colonies, in Canada, Australia, New Zealand and South Africa, first became self-governing colonies and then achieved independence in all matters except foreign policy, defense and trade. 
separate self-governing colonies federated to become Canada and Australia. These and other large self-governing colonies had become known as Dominions by the 1920s. The Dominions achieved almost full independence with the Statute of Westminster. Through a process of decolonization following the Second World War, most of the British colonies in Africa, Asia and the Caribbean gained independence. Some colonies became Commonwealth realms, retaining the British monarch as their own head of state. Most former colonies and protectorates became member states of the Commonwealth of Nations, a non-political, voluntary association of equal members comprising a population of around 2.2 billion people. After the independence of southern Rhodesia in Africa in 1980 and British Honduras in Central America in 1981, the last major colony that remained was Hong Kong, with a population of over 5 million. With 1997 approaching, the United Kingdom and China negotiated the Sino-British Joint Declaration, which led to the whole of Hong Kong becoming a special administrative region of China in 1997, subject to various conditions intended to guarantee the preservation of Hong Kong's capitalist economy and its way of life under British rule for it. Least 50 years after the handover, Georgetown in the Cayman Islands has consequently become the largest city in the overseas territories. In 2002, the British Parliament passed the British Overseas Territories Act 2002. This reclassified the UK's dependent territories as overseas territories and, with the exception of those people solely connected with the sovereign base areas of Cyprus, restored full British citizenship to their inhabitants. Government Head of State The head of state in the overseas territories is the British monarch, Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. The Queen's role in the territories is in her role as Queen of the United Kingdom, and not in right of each territory. The Queen appoints a representative in each territory to exercise her executive power. In territories with a permanent population, a governor is appointed by the Queen on the advice of the British government usually a retired senior military officer or a senior civil servant. In territories without a permanent population, a commissioner is usually appointed to represent the Queen. Exceptionally, in the overseas territory of St. Helena, Ascension and Tristan da Cunha, an administrator is appointed to be the governor's representative in each of the two distant parts of the territory, namely Ascension Island and Tristan da Cunha. The role of the governor is to act as the de facto head of state, and they are usually responsible for appointing the head of government, and senior political positions in the territory. The governor is also responsible for liaising with the UK government, and carrying out any ceremonial duties. A commissioner has the same powers as a governor, but also acts as the head of government. Local government All the overseas territories have their own system of government and localized laws. The structure of the government appears to be closely correlated to the size and political development of the territory. Legal system Each overseas territory has its own legal system independent of the United Kingdom. The legal system is generally based on English common law, with some distinctions for local circumstances. Each territory has its own attorney general and court system. For the smaller territories, the UK may appoint a UK-based lawyer or judge to work on legal cases. This is particularly important for cases involving serious crimes and where it is impossible to find a jury who will not know the defendant in a small population island. Many of them, such as Isle of Man, Cayman Islands and Bermuda are used as tax havens and as flags of convenience for ships as part of the Red Ensign Group. The Pitcairn sexual assault trial of 2004 is an example of how the UK may choose to provide the legal framework for particular cases where the territory cannot do so alone. Relations with the United Kingdom The Foreign and Commonwealth Office has the responsibility of looking after the interests of all overseas territories except Akrotiri and Decalia, which comes under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Defence 
Within the FCO, the general responsibility for the territories is handled by the Overseas Territories Directorate, which is headed by the Minister for the Overseas Territories. As of August 2014, update, the Minister is James Dudridge, a Parliamentary Under Secretary of State. In 2012, the FCO published the, the Overseas Territories security, success and sustainability which set out Britain's policy for the overseas territories, covering six main areas, defence, security and safety of the territories and their people, successful and resilient economies, cherishing the environment, making government work better, vibrant and flourishing communities, productive links with the wider world. Britain and the overseas territories do not have diplomatic representations, although the governments of the overseas territories with indigenous populations all retain a representative office in London. The United Kingdom Overseas Territories Association also represents the interests of the territories in London. The governments in both London and territories occasionally meet to mitigate or resolve disagreements over the process of governance in the territories and levels of autonomy. Britain provides financial assistance to the overseas territories via the Department for International Development. Currently only Montserrat and St Helena receive budgetary aid. Several specialist funds are made available by the UK, including the Good Government Fund which provides assistance on government administration, the Economic Diversification Programme budget which aim to diversify and enhance the economic bases of the territories. The territories have no official representation in the UK Parliament, but have informal representation through the All-Party Parliamentary Group, and can petition the UK Government through the Direct Gov e Petitions website. Only Gibraltar has representation in the European Parliament and it shares its member with the region of South West England. Foreign Affairs Foreign Affairs of the Overseas Territories are handled by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in London. Some territories maintain diplomatic offices in nearby countries for trade and immigration purposes. Several of the territories in the Americas maintain membership within the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the Caribbean Community. The Caribbean Development Bank, Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, and the Association of Caribbean States. The territories are members of the Commonwealth of Nations through the United Kingdom. Gibraltar is the only overseas territory that is part of the European Union, although it is not part of the European Customs Union. The European Tax Policy, the European Statistics Zone or the Common Agriculture Policy. Gibraltar is not a member of the European Union in its own right. The sovereign base areas in Cyprus are not part of the European Union, but they are the only British overseas territory to use the euro as official currency. None of the other overseas territories are members of the EU. The main body of EU law does not apply and, although certain slices of EU law are applied to those territories as part of the EU's association of overseas countries and territories, they are not commonly enforceable in local courts. The October Association also provides overseas territories with structural funding for regeneration projects. Since the return of full British citizenship to most belongers of overseas territories, the citizens of those territories hold concurrent European Union citizenship, giving them rights of free movement across all EU member states. Several nations dispute the UK's sovereignty in the following overseas territories. British Antarctic Territory Territory overlaps Antarctic claims made by Chile and Argentina. British Indian Ocean Territory, claimed by Mauritius and Seychelles. Falkland Islands, claimed by Argentina. Gibraltar, claimed by Spain. South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands, claimed by Argentina. Citizenship None of the overseas territories has its own nationality status and all citizens are classed as British Overseas Territories citizens. 
They do, however, have legislative independence over immigration, and holding the status of a BOTC does not automatically give a person a right of abode in any of the territories, as it depends on the territory's immigration laws. A territory may issue belong a status to allow a person classed as a BOTC to reside in the territory that they have close links with. Non-BOTC citizens may acquire belonger status to reside in a particular territory. Historically, most inhabitants of the British Empire held the status of British subject, which was usually lost upon independence. From 1949, British subjects in the United Kingdom and the remaining colonies became citizens of the United Kingdom and colonies. However changes in British immigration and nationality law between 1962 and 1983 saw the creation of a separate British dependent territories, citizenship with effect from January 1983. Citizens in most territories were stripped of full British citizenship. This was mainly to prevent a mass exodus of the citizens of Hong Kong to the UK before the agreed handover to China in 1997. Exception was made for the Falkland Islands, which had been invaded in 1982 by Argentina. Full British citizenship was soon returned to the people of Gibraltar due to their friction with Spain. However, the British Overseas Territories Act 2002 replaced British Dependent Territory Citizenship with British Overseas Territories Citizenship, and restored full British citizenship to all BOTCs except those from Akrotiri and Decalia. This restored to BOTCs the right to reside in the UK. British citizens, however, do not have an automatic right to reside in any of the overseas territories. Some territories prohibit immigration, and any visitors are required to seek the permission of the territory's government to live in the territory. Military defence of the overseas territories is the responsibility of the UK. Many of the overseas territories are used as military bases by the UK and its allies. Ascension Island, the base known as RAF Ascension Island is used by both the Royal Air Force and the United States Air Force. Bermuda became the primary Royal Navy base in America following U.S. independence. The naval establishment included an admiralty, a dockyard, and a naval squadron. A considerable military garrison was built up to protect it and Bermuda, which the British government came to see as a base rather than as a colony, was known as Fortress Bermuda and the Gibraltar of the West. Canada and the USA also established bases in Bermuda during the Second World War, which were maintained through the Cold War. Four air bases were located in Bermuda during the Second World War. Since 1995, the military force in Bermuda has been reduced to the local territorial battalion, the Royal Bermuda Regiment. British Indian Ocean Territory, the island of Diego Garcia is home to a large naval base and airbase leased to the United States by the United Kingdom until 2036, but either government can opt out of the agreement in 2016. There are British forces in small numbers in the BIOT for administrative and immigration purposes. Falkland Islands, the British forces Falkland Islands includes commitments from the British Army, Royal Air Force and Royal Navy. Gibraltar, British forces Gibraltar includes a Royal Navy dockyard. RAF Gibraltar, used by the RAF and NATO and a local garrison, the Royal Gibraltar Regiment. The sovereign base areas of Akrotiri and Acalia in Cyprus, maintained as strategic British military bases in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. Montserrat, the Royal Montserrat Defence Force, historically connected with the Irish Guards, is a body of 20 volunteers, whose duties are primarily ceremonial. St Helena, it has been speculated that the new St Helena airport might be used for military purposes but this has neither been confirmed nor denied. Currencies, the many British overseas territories use a varied assortment of currencies, including the British pound, US dollar, or their own currencies which may be pegged to either symbols and insignia. Each overseas territory has been granted its own flag and coat of arms by the British monarch. 
Traditionally, the flags follow the blue ensign design, with the Union flag in the canton, and the territory's coat of arms in the fly. Exceptions to this are Bermuda which uses a red ensign, British Antarctic Territory which uses a white ensign, British Indian Ocean Territory which uses a blue ensign with wavy lines to symbolize the sea, and Gibraltar which uses a banner of its coat of arms. Acrotirian de Calia and St. Helena, Ascension and Tristan da Cunha are the only British overseas territories without their own flag. The Union flag is used in these territories. Sports. As a British overseas territory, all apart from Bermuda, the British Virgin Islands and the Cayman Islands do not have a recognized National Olympic Committee. The British Olympic Association is recognized as the appropriate NOC for such athletes and thus athletes who hold a British passport are eligible to represent Great Britain at the Olympic Games. Shara Proctor from Anguilla, Delano Williams from the Turks and Caicos Islands. Janiya Wade Frey from Bermuda and Georgina Kassa from Gibraltar strive to represent Team GB at the London 2012 Olympics. Proctor, Wade Frey and Kassa qualified for Team GB, with Williams missing the cut, however wishing to represent the UK in 2016. The Gibraltar national football team was accepted into UEFA in 2013 in time for the 2016 European Championships. It has also applied to be part of FIFA and hopes to be accepted in time for eligibility for the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifying.